So you've done the self-help and you've dipped into some personal development, but now you ask the question, now what? What can you do? Well, if you want to escape the apathy, step right this way. So twice a year, I teach a course called Autonomy. It's a 12-week personal development and training course. What people get out of it is multifaceted. Uh, there's curriculum, there's exercises, there's camaraderie. You make new friends. There's a whole lot of interesting things. We're going to hear a sample from the course right now in its ongoing season. Let's take a look at the value these students are getting. So my question was almost more rhetorical. I just ask people to think about, uh, do, you, do you have a yearly theme for next year? Uh, not a New Year's resolution, but a theme for the type, what, what you want to be doing in that year. Uh, and I, I'm I find this to be... In January of 2020, I had a theme, Ryan. It was optimize and delegate. And I found out that that theme caused the pandemic and I swore off having themes for a year again. So... No yeah. theme this year, no pandemic. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I find it useful because uh, a lot of people, they set up New Year's resolutions and they can't uh, they can't really stick to them. And so I try to set up a theme, which is more general and more of a, by the end of that year, what what do you want to see having been done? Or, uh, you know, do you want to, you know, do more of a certain thing? You know, would you want to, it could be anything as simple as I want to get up at a particular time. Or you want to make it more about you know, optimizing, you know, time management, and so you have some sort of general thing that you can constantly orient your actions around day by day. And so I just it's a thing I wanted to put out there for people to think about because uh, I, I, at the very least, have found it very useful to do. I didn't really do much of one this year, ironically, but I'm going to try to do one again for next year. And uh, yeah, if uh, if you do or don't have one, then you can speak up or not speak up. It's all to you. I uh, cede the floor to everyone else. It's funny that you mentioned this now because I uh, I just did my yearly planning and review and uh, uh, I had recently seen a video by someone who mentioned this very topic about setting goals and he used a, he used a different metaphor but basically he said of all the goals and things and intentions that you set for the year you pick one and you let that goal be the magnet under the paper that organizes all the little bits of iron filing uh, on the top. Um, so yeah, I, I, um, given what my goal is, I'm not sharing it in this meeting, but, uh, it's exciting. My, my magnet under the paper is my concern, hey, but y'all can enjoy the little filings. Yeah, exactly. Actually, while I have the mic, can I jump in with my question? Oh, no, no. We'll finish Ryan's thing first. I yield Well, I want to dig into anyone... Ryan's thing for a second. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm not a fan of new year's resolutions because <clears throat> I think it's just a, you know how we talk about collecting failures? That's not a good way to do it by not applying yourself, not like not setting yourself up for success is not a good way to inherit your failures. So if you want the idea of change for next year, I've always tried to start doing it like in December. And because if you wait till January, you're dead in the water. So if you want some sort of change to happen, you start thinking and doing and doing, you know, and then the other thing is I like Ryan's idea of, a vision for the end of the year's growth. What do we want to look like at the end of the year? We want to do this. We want to do that. Okay. So how does that come about? Okay. But we had to do, and how long did we have to do that? Well, we had to start in February and, or, you know, these sort of things. And then you give yourself a plan for growth that you can live into. And then it's not like you didn't pay attention to it at all. You, you know, uh, a lot of people make these goals or, uh, they're there. What do they call them? Uh, New Year's resolutions without picturing. There's a lot of visualization involved in success. If you don't picture the trials and tribulations that you're going to encounter along that way, you're not going to be prepared to meet them along that way. So you have to kind of see what is the realistic picture of me doing this thing this year and what is it going to take? It's going to take probably me doing some things I haven't done before to get some results I haven't had before. Does that make sense? Okay, great. So we are open to getting out of our comfort zone, getting into growth mode, triggering our complexity, doing awkward things that are difficult and confusing and embarrassing or whatever with the intent of learning our way forward so that we can master some new skill, some new talent, fill in some area of resource in our life that we need but don't have solidified yet, all these sort of great things. So it could be a project, it could be education, it could be networking and communication, making new friends or meeting the people that you need to get those projects that you dream of mapped to reality. Uh, so I think it's a very healthy process. They don't give us a good structure in this society 
to be like here you know you you know about new year's resolutions does anyone know somebody who like knocks it out of the park every year with their new year's resolutions and do we have that formula of how they're doing that because most people it's like you you're buying something you're not getting any instructions with it you're not shown how to use the thing and then you're probably going to fail and then you're going to hate on yourself because you're like i'm not good you know i'm whatever right provide yourself with the support system think those things through give yourself a standard operating procedure for what's going to happen and then apply yourself to that framework and you have a lot greater chance at succeeding and at least if you fail it would be more meaningful and substantial such you could learn your way forward from it because there's intention and care put into the whole thing Everyone's doing some kind of self-help these days, and you can find a million self-help courses out there. Most other courses out there are hosting lectures, they're hosting videos, they're maybe even doing Q&As, and these are great starting points to encourage learning. But at Autonomy, we believe that hands-on practice is the best way to really lock in what we're learning. There's no better way to gain confidence and mastery than through action. After each lecture, we practice the concepts we've learned with other students, giving and receiving feedback in a non-judgmental environment. The result is mastery of concepts like entrepreneurship, ethical sales, and self-reliance in an environment that directly translates to the real world. Plus, you make connections with other like-minded individuals who are learning right alongside you, and you have a lifetime membership in the community. The Autonomy Course with Richard Grove equips you with confidence, competence, and courage in a world filled with confusion and noise. You can learn more at getautonomy.info. We'll see you there.